Thanks for having me. So again, let's check again. Let's check now. Who believes that management, the social technology from the industrial age, might be dead? Might be dead. Now a few more hands go up than in the first voting round. That's okay. Um, I actually, this is not a joke, and I don't want to tease you with this. Management, the social technology, is dead. That's a fact. I want to prove this point to you, of course. For the time being, I would like to, to, to sum up a little bit of an impression that you may have. Some people here are from the telecom agile community already. They identify, you identify yourselves with agile. You identify yourself with these guiding principles uh, uh, as well that we heard about. Um, you may or you ha all have a lot of change experience and probably you have experienced that change is hard, that there are so many barriers to performance and change, that things are not simple at all, that they are difficult and so on. Uh, this is the kind of trouble that many organizations find themselves in. Not all organizations are so much under fire as the Deutsche Telekom Group, of course. I mean, here the house is really burning. So what do we do? I mean, we have this, this trouble, we want to become more agile, but how does it work? And now comes the good part of the message, the, the good promise, so to say. I can tell you safely, I'm absolutely sure about this, you don't have a people problem. Deutsche Telekom doesn't have a people problem. You have the right people. You may have a few too many there, too few there, and so on, that kind of thing. But you do, and basically, you don't have a people problem. You have a totally different kind of problem. You have a fucked up organization. That's the problem that you have, yeah? <laughs> to make it at least fun, you know, the Hungarians, they don't look so happy. I want to create a little bit, you know, the, 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 the guys who were attending there. Here, in this session, it's allowed to laugh, so if you feel like laughing, please do so. You've got a, you've got a, it's, it's, we can make a beep, you know, you, we have, you have a, a crazy organization. You believe, who, who of you um, believes that your organization looks like this? Like an org chart? Oh, that's, oh, lots, lots of hands going up. Yes, many of you believe that your organization looks like this, and this is the big, hairy fucking problem that you have. Your organization, you think that your organization is like this, like a top-down pyramid hierarchy, you know, people thinkers and managers on the top, um, doers at the bottom, and this is what management is. I would like you to, you to travel back with me in time. About 100 years ago, management was invented. Management was invented by incredibly smart people, like Henri Fayol here in France, next door, so to say, and uh, the real inventor of management, who knows who, who, who that was? Who invented management for us? There's one guy in particular who stands out, an American from Philadelphia. His name was Frederick, Frederick Winslow Taylor. And he had this amazing idea for organizations in, for the industrial age. In 1911, uh, he published a book, uh, The Principles of Scientific Management, in which he de described the guiding principles of organizing work for the industrial age. And he had this amazing key idea, and I want I, I invite you not to forget this ever, please. This is very important. He suggested, Frederick Taylor suggested, that management is the art and the science of dividing the organization between thinkers, or let's put it differently. Frederick Taylor was a liberator. He thought that for organizations to work efficiently, you should take, you should liberate the workers from, from what? From the thinking. That was Frederick Taylor's big idea. The big idea of management, the social technology, is to take the thinking out of the doing and to let people at the top do the thinking for the non-thinkers, for the workers. It may sound like a funny idea, but that is the, the core, the DNA of management, the social technology. And of course, this has become the standard model of organizing. So if you look at your management practices, what you do at Deutsche Telekom to coordinate, to steer, to do the work, to organize yourselves, to plan, this logic of dividing between thinkers and doers and information flow, flows up, commands flow down, and then there is execution at the bottom, this has become very much the DNA of our thinking. That is why we are all, as the Americans say, I would never say, we are all fucked because of that, you know? Because the world around us has changed, but we are still driving organizations from the top down, dividing between thinkers and doers. Now, what killed management? There's one thing that called, uh, killed management. Does anybody know? Management, the social technology, was invented 100, 100 years ago, 104 or 5 years ago, uh, by guys like Frederick Taylor, and then it died. Does anybody know why? Why management, the social technology, died? It wasn't you, it wasn't me. Something happened. 
The reason is complexity. Complexity killed management in the 1970s. I will explain to you why, but first let's understand what complexity is briefly, because then we can think about what agility means to an organization and will mean to, to Deutsche Telekom. First of all, um, here, here we have two concepts visualized. One is complexity and one is the complicated. Uh, there is, in organizations, we always have both things. Neither of them is good or bad, they are just different. There is a difference between the complicated and the complex. Um, the watch that you see at the left is what kind of system? Is it complicated or is it complex? Let's see, complicated, who thinks that it's complicated? Hands up, complicated, some hands going up. Who thinks that it's com complex? Please, ah, you are not, you're not sure. Okay, there, half, of, half of you said it might be complicated, half of, of you said a watch is complex. Um, I will give you a hint. Um, both kind of systems, a complicated and a complex system, they can both have many parts, yeah, many, many parts. But in a complicated system, the parts are working together in a predefined way. That doesn't change. Um, a complicated system, complicatedness means we don't understand it. So a software, is it complicated or complex? Is it complicated, a software? Complicated or complex? Complicated? Who says it's complicated? Uh, who says a software is complex? Okay, still hands going up with complex, that's totally wrong. Okay, uh, wonderful. <laughs> a watch, let's take a watch here, has many parts, but it is a complicated system. A watch is a complicated system. A, a, a robot is a, compli a complicated system. Any software is a complicated system. It is, it is controllable externally. Yes, we can, we can, it, it doesn't create uncertainty. Complicatedness means, and we, are, we all use these words interchangeably, complicated, complex, but there's a vital important difference. Complicated systems can be controlled and um, complicated means I don't understand it, but once you understand it, the complicated becomes trivial. Yeah. So what's, what's a complex system? What's an example for a complex system? Well, Deutsche Telekom is a complicated system. Every team is a complex, a complex system. Um, any human being is a complex system. And the difference between a complex system and a complicated one is that the compli complex system creates Surprises. Sounds easy, right? Like my wife <laughs> or your loved ones, yeah? Some of you have children. Complicated or complex? Yeah? <laughs> the complicated can be taken apart and put together because it's not alive, but you know, taking, do, doing this with kids, it's not, no, no good, no good, yeah? So a complex, a complex system, it is alive. It, it, it creates surprises all the time. It create, that's why it creates uncertainties through the surprises. The, the parts, the elements of a complex system, they interact in varying and surprising ways. You know? Interaction changes, like when kids grow up and so on, and when we learn something. So um, Deutsche Telekom, of course, is a complex system. But in work, these two worlds, the complicated and the complex, meet each other. There are many agile people here. Um, many of you work with software, right? IT systems, software, correct? IT systems and software are wonderful to automatize which part of value creation? Complicated or complex? Complicated. Everything that is complicated can in principle be codified, automatized. We did that a lot during the industrial age. Now, in, in work, we have both parts of value creation have, has both, complicated and complex. Neither is good or bad. It's, it's that in work and in, in, in our daily work, we encounter both things, the complicated and the complex. It is totally natural to have that. Now, historically, things have changed over time. And we'd like to walk you through this briefly. Look, it, before the industrial age, before the telecom era, by the way, you know, before we invented the steam machine and uh, international logistics and so on, and uh, the railways, uh, cars, steamboats and so on, and uh, uh, automatizing, uh, you know, having machinery for production and that kind of stuff. Before the industrial age, when we were still in the, in the age of crafts manufacturing, we didn't really have m global markets, only for very few goods like porcelain and spices, we had global markets. But most manufacturers were crafts manufacturers working locally. They didn't even encounter each other. So if you produced a violin here in Bonn, you didn't compete with the guy producing violins in Munich or, 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 or Cologne. You didn't even encounter them. Those were the days of, of crafts manufacturing and we didn't have competition. We didn't have spacious markets. Those only happened and, 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 and evolved in the industrial age. So in, so in the industrial age, this is where 
your company comes in, we encounter spacious, slow-moving, exploding markets with few com little, com little competition, like... Uh, well, we all remember those times, right? When you had in the telecom sector maybe one, uh, one uh, company offering their services, a few little competition, monopoles and oligopolisy, uh, oligopol oligopoles dominated the markets. Those were the great... That, that was a great era, by the way. This was fun. And for this time, for this kind of dull, slow-moving mass markets, we invented management. And by the way, also project management. Who works with project management here? Project managers or project, ah, yeah, lots of project work, yes, some more on this side, curiously, okay. For this era, we invented project management, also as the notion of, well, some do the project thinking and the others do the doing. That's where we invented um, Gantt charts and uh, the, the notion of the powerful project leaders and project budgets and steering uh, tools for project and milestone management, all these things that we now know don't really ha work anymore. And the why is this. Markets have changed again. They changed from the crafts manufacturing age to the industrial age, and they changed again about 40 years ago when the information or knowledge age started. Now we have crowded global markets with lots of competition where any other company's idea touches us immediately. It doesn't, have, it doesn't take just 20 years until it touches us, until it makes a difference for you. For us, it makes a difference immediately. So we went from dull, slowly moving mass markets with little competition to highly competitive mass markets. So we went from the golden era of management and that ended in the 1970s. Around the 1970s, this switch from dull, slow moving mass markets, oligopolies, monopolies, that ended and we went into this new era. Well, 40 years ago already. Of course, some markets went faster into this. In the 1970s, there, there was some first evidence for this switch. For example, we, there was one production company that was capable of producing uh, cars in a much more efficient way, not in bulk manufacturing mode, but they produced cars in a massive, in a massive, um, in massive quantities, and every car that came from the production line looked different than the other car that came, came before and after. Which was the company? Toyota was one of the first companies to figure out this new way of organizing for highly competitive, highly complex value creation. Uh, at that age, the age of the Japanese miracle, as we call it, complexity came back into value creation. In the, in the industrial age, we were able to drive out complexity out of value creation, and we made work complicated, or we even were able to simplify it. Actually, Deutsche Telekom was brilliant in that, to make it simple, to make it non-thinking, so to say, yeah? to make it repetitive. But now, markets, competition, customers have changed, and we have to accept that complexity has already grown back 